Away from the breathtaking sights of Athens, in a makeshift refugee camp, Afghans gathered to mourn the loss of a fellow asylum seeker. The young man was repatriated to his hometown in Afghanistan, only to be killed by local Taliban fighters. We have all gathered here tonight in mourning to commemorate and pay tribute to all of those who have fallen as martyrs. The young and the old pray for those who died in the unrest that continues to grip their country. Afghans remain among the top three nationalities seeking asylum in Europe. This is Eliniko, a former international airport with a neighboring sports complex built for the 2004 Olympics. The abandoned buildings are now home to some 4,000 Afghan asylum seekers. Across the site, families live crammed in tiny tents. Under European asylum rules, they have few options other than voluntary repatriation. Those who got here after the EU's controversial migration deal with Ankara will be returned to Turkey. Taza, a widowed mother of six, fled a decade ago from Afghanistan to Iran. The Taliban were going from house to house, taking women and girls and acting dishonorably towards them. Her family arrived in Greece in April, but because of various bureaucratic hurdles, she has not been able to apply for asylum. Penniless and with several mouths to feed, she has decided to repatriate to Afghanistan. But the move terrifies her. You can't live in Afghanistan. There's war all the time. The kids are scared. I'm scared. I have no legal guardian or anyone to depend on for a living. My son is scared and doesn't want to go back, but I decided to return for lack of better options. Her oldest son worries he could get killed in a vendetta if he returns to their hometown. Taza wants to convince him to go home, but warns him it will be difficult. And if we were to go back to Afghanistan? Life in Afghanistan is really hard. Believe me, I've been there. It was also hard in Iran. But returning to Iran is no longer an option. The family's refugee status there became void once they left. In the evening, we meet up again with them, this time in downtown Athens. They've been told that the voluntary return program set up by the International Organization for Migration would take them back to Kabul. But they worry about getting back to their hometown in the north, where the Taliban rebellion is raging. My heart's pounding over whether I'll make it back there and get killed. Yusuf, also from Afghanistan, has spent 13 years trying to make a life for himself in Athens, but his claim for asylum has been systematically rejected. He shares his frustration with an Afghan friend whose own application succeeded. I don't understand what's going on with my asylum case. You've learned to speak Greek. Of course I speak Greek. If I didn't, how would I have been able to work? And you have Greek friends? Of course. Yusuf risks deportation. A scenario he did not imagine when he left Afghanistan after NATO forces came in 2003. During that time, do you know how many people were killed? I would say 70,000 or 71,000 people died during those years. I very much would like to have a family because I'm 42 years old. The years are passing and I don't want to miss out on that opportunity. But first of all, I want to have papers to be legal. Come here, Mamanuli. Come here, lovely. He's awaiting a final hearing on his asylum application and fears he might be forced back to a home that no longer exists. There's no way I can go back to Afghanistan. Why? Because it's utterly lawless. 
Rules only exist for those people inside the parliament, who are in charge, who are protected by weapons and armoured cars. The rest of us are not able to live there in safety. The questions these asylum seekers ask are simple, yet impossible to answer. Will the borders open? Will they be granted asylum? How can they return home after being away for so long with no support? They are desperate for help to restart their lives while keeping their families together. <laughs>